And the final speaker came as a bit of a surprise to everybody present, I think. It was George Galloway. Now, uh, George is a very interesting character. Uh, of course, he holds some very robust views on a wide range of subjects, Euroscepticism being one of them. And he's a, another veteran opponent of the European Union, uh, former Labour Member of Parliament. Then he moved to respect and... Uh, of course, we all know George's views uh, coming on different issues. But anyway, uh, he gave a really good speech, I thought, and uh, the closing remarks that he made really summed up the mood of the meeting. Uh, so, over to George Galloway. Comrades and friends. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank Nigel Farage very sincerely for his kind welcome, the more generous because Nigel and I agree on hardly anything at all. <laughs> but we do agree at least on one thing, and it happens to be the most important thing, not only now, but in the lifetime of everyone in this hall and everyone in this country. It is the demand that Britain should be an independent, sovereign and democratic country and that means leaving the European Union. In this hall as in this country, all of us will have different visions of what our country could be, should be. But the fundamental point is, none of us here in this hall, none of us here in this country are in a position to decide which vision of Britain should come to pass. Because that power has been given away to a lavishly funded, eurocratic state to a toothless, fantastically financed pseudo-parliament and to a council of ministers of countries which, to be fair, how could it be otherwise, act in their own national interests rather than ours. And that means that our independence as a country is no more and we have an exit door as Nigel just said, and if we don't take it, then we and our children and their children will lament and regret that we did not take that opportunity, which now comes before us. I, uh, I wanted to be here to nail the lie that to be on this side of the argument is to be on the political right. I fought the 1975 referendum behind my then leader, the late and great Right Honourable Tony Benn, and it's in memory of him that I'm standing here this evening. Tony Benn won us the right to have a referendum in 1975, and this I must say, but for Nigel Farage, we would not be having a referendum on this yeah, 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 yeah. the European Union has anything to do with left. As my friend for nearly 40 years, though she was obviously a child then, Kate Hoy, <laughs> pointed out, what's left about TTIP allowing American corporations to smash down the doors of the National Health Service and privatize what they like with the power of law behind them? What's left 
about driving down workers' wages and conditions? What's left about a situation? And you know, this I must say, I know that this is one of my differences with Nigel. I have not just respect, but love for the people of Romania. I'm the only person in this room that has published a book in the Romanian language. I even speak a little bit of Romanian. But I cannot agree to subcontract to the Romanian government the right to decide who can come and live and work in Britain, who we can deport from Britain, what level of deficit we can run in Britain, or what our foreign policy in Britain should be. That I cannot do. I want to nail the lie that to be on this side of the argument is to wallow in nationalism. As a matter of fact, I hate nationalism. I fought Scottish nationalism all my life, and I helped win the referendum in Scotland in 2014, defeating Scottish nationalism. I hope to help win this referendum in a few months' time. That's why I'm pleased to say I have yesterday on behalf of my party, signed up as an affiliate of Grassroots Out, and I hope that the Electoral Commission will give this broadly based all-party campaign the designation of the official Out campaign. Oh. But neither am I a British nationalist. Being a Scotsman from Irish background, I can hardly be called a little Englander. <laughs> there is nothing internationalist about locking yourself out of the world. There is nothing internationalist about locking yourself in, although the locks seem to have broken into a rich man's club in a part of Europe. I want the world to be our oyster. I want to trade with the Commonwealth that we so shamefully abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. I want to trade with Brazil, with Russia, with India, with China, with South Africa, with Iran, where the sun is rising, not setting and where most of the customers in the world actually live. So we will not be cutting ourselves off from anything if we leave the European Union. We will be opening ourselves to the entire world. Now that is internationalism. I mentioned, I mentioned the Eurocrat. I was a member of the British Parliament for almost 30 years, and I woke up one morning to discover that somebody called Catherine Ashton was now my foreign minister. Like Nigel in the wonderful footage you just saw, my question was, who are you? <laughs> who elected you? Who can remove you? And I watched as this person I'd never heard of before, on our behalf, dragged us into one confrontation after another with one adversary after another. Now, to be fair, it may very well be that the British government, maybe any British government, certainly in recent years, would have taken us into those same confrontations. But at least I could have fought against that here and Parliament could have overturned that there. And David Davis has left, a man I greatly love and respect. David Davis and I were part of an epic debate in 2014 
when that genius Cameron tried to persuade us to become the Air Force for ISIS and Al Qaeda and start bombing Syria. The American Air Force was warming up on the tarmac, just waiting for a rubber stamp from the British Parliament of David Cameron's point of view. But in an epic debate in which speeches changed the outcome, his speech and my speech among them changed the outcome, we defeated Cameron. And the engines had to be switched off at the Andrews Air Base. And we narrowly, by 13 votes, avoided becoming embroiled in a disaster. That's the kind of parliamentary sovereignty I believe in. And that's the kind of sovereignty I don't want you to think that I'm any kind of pacifist against all wars. If I was alive and of age, I would have been among the first in the queue to volunteer to fight in the Second World War. Indeed, I would have been one of those agitating that we should confront fascism earlier and with all the vigor that we could then muster. But the war, when it came, was, as Mr. Churchill said, our finest hour when we all went forward together. Mr. Churchill and Mr. Attlee and Mr. Bevan together as one front rank leading the British people, never as united before or since. And we wrote our name in the stars. That's what we are doing here tonight. Mr. Farage and me, Miss Hoy and Mr. Davis, left, right, left, right, Forward march to victory! <laughs> declare that in the weeks and months ahead we shall set aside party politics and work together towards our common goal of a free and prosperous United Kingdom outside the Un European Union, engaged with the wider world and governed by its own laws. And we're going to sign that pledge right now. Yeah. Way up here, we can sign the declaration. 